Welcome everyone. This is the Ubuntu Community Q&A. Uh, this week it's also called the Nick and Daniel Show. Uh, Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> <laughs> Answer all your Ubuntu questions, whatever you might have. Um, if you're watching this on Ubuntu on Air, there's a chat widget below the, the video feed. Just enter uh, a random nickname, whatever you like. Hit the connect button and then you can get in touch with us and answer all the questions. Um, if you ask questions, just make sure you prefix them with question in capital letters so we can more easily pick them up. And also, while you're at it, um, make sure you circle, friend, follow, everything that has to do with Ubuntu on Air. Uh, that way you, you uh, get, always get the news when there's a new show, when something was recorded and, and you want to, to watch it. Uh, you're going to make Jose very happy. That's the guy who's running Ubuntu on Air. Indeed. All right. Um, so I think we have a, a few things that we want to cover probably before we before we dive in and get started. Um, let's see. There's a there's a few interesting dates coming up. Uh, one of which is one of my favorite times uh, within the uh, cycle for Ubuntu, and that is the Global Jam. Um, I know some of you may have seen. Uh, Mike's post that uh, Global Jam packs are back, and that is uh, completely true. If you want to get a copy of a, uh, a Global Jam pack and all the goodies that are, are contained therein, uh, you just need to submit a request uh, for um, through the community donations uh, program. I think Daniel could probably supply a link as well to help you out. And for those of you who might be watching later, um, if you just go to mhall119.com, you'll see his post and uh, he'll redirect you accordingly to the, to the proper location. But more importantly, of course, it's time to plan your actual event. So um, if you have a, a local or you're involved in a loco, uh, this is a great time slash excuse uh, to get together and to have some fun and to um, do something in the name and spirit of Ubuntu. If you don't have a loco, uh, never fear. There's lots of, uh, of great activities uh, that are, that are um, going on around the world and you can join either uh, physically or virtually in spirit and uh, celebrate Ubuntu anyway. So uh, never fear if you don't have a, have a loco. Um, or if you really want to get ambitious, you can always consider planning an event. Um, it's not as difficult as you might think. And uh, if you go on to the Global Jam wiki pages on wiki.ubuntu.com slash, I think it's Global Jam, you'll find a guide there on actually hosting a Global Jam. Um, again, it's it's pretty simple. If you just manage to find a venue and uh, places like coffee shops, uh, restaurants, uh, um, any sort of your favorite little local hangout, uh, these are great places to host an event. And that's that's really about it. If you're able to uh, um, ask permission to to have something there, uh, then you just need to spread the word and get people to show up, and and that's it. There's not a huge huge amount of formality or uh, structure you need to to run one of these things. So. Uh, definitely consider hosting an event uh, if that uh, if that strikes your interest. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you already know that uh, you and your friends you you like talking about Ubuntu and you might want to get started with I don't know uh, translations or documentation or anything else, um, just start an event. I mean, you and your friends are going to do it anyway. Why not invite a couple of others? Uh, and it's as Nick said, it's it's really not difficult if it's. Uh, just a few of us, uh, just a few of you, uh, you just set up the event and you meet at the coffee shop or the library or the university or wherever you, you, you find a room. Um, and if you have uh, questions, you can all, always get in touch with the, with the worldwide Ubuntu local community. Um, there's the, the local contacts mailing list, the Ubuntu local teams ISC channel where you can and it's, it's also a, a, a fun way to, to get to know people because you might be talking to people who are uh, active in the, in the French local or in the, I don't know, the Greek local or uh, South African local. Like you, you get to know a lot of people and they all have experience in, in running events. So they might have a, a few tips for you. Um, I think David said that we would um, have a chat with the local council or start the conversations on tomorrow. So uh, I guess there's going to be a couple of blog posts. Maybe we'll, we have another 
hangout where we talk about Global Jam. We're going to reach out to all the, the local teams around the world and uh, make sure we update all the documentation. It's still like three or four weeks. How long is it? Yes, so I was going to say, we, we said all this and we didn't mention the date. It's, it's actually August 7th to August 9th. It's that weekend. Brilliant. Um, yes. So put it on your calendars, uh, plan accordingly. You still have time, um, even, even though all the summer uh, excitement is going on uh, for those of us in the Northern <laughs> Hemisphere. Uh, anyway, uh, it's, uh, it's still a uh, circle the date so that that weekend does get filled, because those things tend to fill up. Um, also happening on that weekend as well is uh, an UPUCON. And so for those of you who might be in South America and or uh, willing to travel, uh, might be interested, and uh, this is actually something that, that Jose and some others have put together, and it's UBUCON LA. Um, you can find out more information on UBUCONLA.org, uh, but it, again, it's uh, going to be August 7th and 8th, and it corresponds quite nicely with uh, the Ubuntu Global Jam. So that's a, a great way uh, to celebrate with, uh, with everyone else there in, uh, in Latin America. So, Absolutely. And um, it's, it's not 100% confirmed yet, but Probably next week at the uh, community Q and A, we're going to have Jose and uh, Sujivan. Um, Jose is from the Peruvian logo. Sujivan is from the from the Swiss, from the German logo, and they both organize uh, UbuCons. So we're going to talk with to them and, and have a chat and figure out what how does it work? Like how do you organize an event like this where you have like two, three, four, five hundred people or more showing up? Uh, you're going to learn all about that next week. Oh, very exciting. A little sneak preview. Yeah. Right. Let's see what else was on our list. Um, shall I point people to... Let me just share my screen real quick. Sure. Yeah, you should show. This is a visual thing. Definitely needs to be seen. Uh, Screen sharing doesn't seem to work over here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you can try it. Let me give you the link. Sure. Let's, uh, let's give this a whirl. These are, this is Chromium. And they're my lower third. They also didn't work before. Everyone's, everyone's going to see like 87 versions of you going into Braille. OK, how's that? Perfect. Excellent. So yeah, um, Alan Pope and, and others have been working on this. And it's really beautiful. This is a developer Ubuntu com slash community slash core apps. And it has a really nice overview of all the core apps. And if you just click on, on one of them, like the weather or yeah, music, whatever, uh, they're all equally great. Um, it lists like what the app does, what the app looks like, who's been working on the app, and so on, how to get involved. Um, it's, it's just beautiful to see uh, that it was loads of, of volunteers bringing all of these apps to the phone. Like they're installed by default, everyone is using them. Uh, it's, just, it's just beautiful to see. It's great work. Indeed. Uh, let's see. There. there we are. So definitely go check that out uh, on developer.ubuntu.com. Uh, those of you who might remember um, the the original wiki pages, this is a this is a far cry from those, and they're lovely to look at. And of course, they actually have lots of useful and updated information. Um, so for those of you who have been always interested about getting involved in the core apps. Um, and might uh, might just sort of want to browse and see what's available and see what options exist uh, for ways to get involved. Go check it out. Tell us what you think. Absolutely. Also, um, speaking of people we wanted to invite to the community QA, there was the, uh, at least the people on my list were the UbuCon organizers. I uh, also wanted to invite uh, Oli Ries, who uh, managing a lot of uh, teams um, related to Ubuntu. So uh, I wanted to give him a bit more of an introduction. 
uh, we wanted to invite somebody from the desktop team because uh, I think it's the majority of the questions that have been coming in lately were all about the desktop and what's happening on the desktop and when can I have the new desktop. So uh, we're going to have uh, Will here very, very soon so he can, uh, can answer all of those questions. If you have anyone else you want to uh, want us to, to invite, like we had some kernel questions, if, if you think that's interesting or whatever else, like just let us know, like on IRC or by email, whatever. We're going to invite all these people and uh, yeah, let them maybe do a, a demo or uh, just answer your questions. Do we have any other announcements or stuff we wanted to, to mention? Um, hmm. Oh, um, I'll do a quick plug for Akiva uh, because this is so cool. Uh, Akiva has been working on for some time uh, this plugin for the Ubuntu SDK. So for those of you who might have um, checked out uh, app development for Ubuntu and, and might have downloaded the Ubuntu SDK and played around with it a little bit, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But essentially, Akiva has created a, a way for you to execute your autopilot test right inside the SDK. So previously to this, you had to um, do some work on the command line and you know understand the syntax and understand how to launch your test cases and that sort of thing. That's all all in the past now. Um, and so if you <laughs> if you want some more information about that, you can find it on, on developer.ubuntu.com. If you go to the start quality page, there's a, a lovely guide about how to run autopilot tests. And that's been updated to talk about uh, utilizing the Ubuntu SDK to actually run these tests. Um, so do check that out. Uh, give them some feedback if you're interested. Uh, also, if you're interested in actually helping extend that or hack on that project, it's on Launchpad. You can find it under Qt Creator uh, Plugin Dash Autopilot, I believe, on Launchpad. So definitely cool. check that out. And a huge shout out to Akiva and Benjamin as well from the SDK team for actually making that a reality. So thanks, okay. guys. And how does it work for for people who already use the SDK? Do they just need to upgrade to a new version or? Sure, yeah, the, sh the short answer is for those of you who already use the SDK, uh, it's as simple as installing a package that uh, Benjamin has made available in the Ubuntu um, SDK release team PPA. So do make sure you have that PPA installed, and you should, um, to make sure you have the latest and greatest uh, SDK version at all times. Um, but then it's just a matter of installing the package. So, Are we going to make it default or something? Um, yeah, uh, I would uh, hope and assume that that will happen. And um, for now, like I said, yes, fingers crossed. <laughs> for now, install it, give, give it a whirl, um, give us some feedback. We've already had a few bugs and some improvements that have been landing. Uh, so I imagine after a little period of iteration, we'll probably try and try and push to have it include by default. So brilliant, indeed. All right. Yeah, there's a few questions coming in already. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, the first one was from Nanek. Is there a site email forum where we can send our ideas and designs for Unity 8 desktop? Um, so yeah, um, Michael already answered this. There's Unity Ubuntu com slash get involved slash design. Um, in general, I think it works quite well if you get something like this on um, the team's mailing list or on, on Google Plus, like in one of the Ubuntu communities. It's really interesting how um, designs and, and, and crazy ideas uh, came up somewhere in the community and just bubbled to the top. It was uh, very obvious, like how many people shared the idea, liked the idea, and then uh, maybe somebody's even interested in, in implementing it. So um, don't wait for some special committee, uh, committee to, to send something off. Um, just send it to the mailing list if you, if you have a good idea. Yeah, I think I would echo Daniel. Um, I've noticed there's been a, a very uh, active uh, number of designers, uh, especially on uh, Google Plus, where I tend to tend to browse. But uh, just giving it a nice mock-up and a little explanation, and people will definitely give feedback. Um, it's, it's been interesting seeing 
uh, lots of cool ideas. I love a good UI. I'm horrible at designing them. I just, it's just not something that I have in me. Um, but you know, I love seeing uh, uh, something that uh, I can you know envision and not necessarily put down on paper. And seeing that before me is, is always really, really cool to see. Um, Thank you. So we always need good design. Um, yeah. Or if it's um, an icon or whatever else, like if you have an idea how something should work, don't wait for, for somebody to, to tell you to do it. Just, just do it. Indeed. All right. Uh, Euclid asks uh, an interesting question. Um, and he asks, what is, going, what is going to happen with Adobe Flash updates? Um, it's a kind of a, a loaded and interesting question. Did you see the news, Daniel, about uh, Firefox is going to block it, yeah. uh, I think, in future releases? So I'm assuming that's what's triggering his question. But Yeah, I don't know how exactly that's going to work. If they're going to block all releases from now on, if that's going to happen with the next Firefox update, or if it's something that is uh, loaded dynam dynamically, like uh, it looks up if, if it should be blocked right now or not. Like it's hard. Like it's 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 really hard. You have, we have some people who are relying on on using Flash, like, I mean, not, not for games or anything, but it's actually companies who use Flash for whatever, whatever they have. Uh, so it's a really hard decision to just turn it off, just turn it off right. and, and lock people out of doing their work or, or whatever. Um, or if you have like Flash websites, and there's no other way of driving the website somehow, and people just can't view it anymore. It's 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 really hard. That's why I really like the I forgot his name. The suggestion of, of the Facebook security guy, like he suggested to for Adobe to come up with a with a date where they're going to kill it properly. So everyone has one date to look at and to upgrade everything and, and make sure that they have HTML5 replacements or or whatever else. Um, but it doesn't look like, like that's going to happen. Like Flash has been said to be dead for years now. Yes. I think a, a decade ago, people were already complaining about Flash, but it's still there. Here we are. Um, I actually typically disable Flash when I'm, when I'm browsing the web. It's, yeah. uh, and Thanks to Mike's Mike's suggestion, I usually usually do that, and then only turn it on if there's something uh, I absolutely need to get to. But man, I can't remember the last time I really had to do that. Yeah. Uh, so there's even like a uh, what's it called it's low, low flash or something like a Firefox extension that automatically converts uh, flash videos if there's an appropriate link. With oh, the, nice. The uh, yeah, that's or, cool. Yeah. So. If, there are some tools, but right. I think it's for, for Ubuntu, it's probably best to go with what the browser folks are deciding, like, unless there's something the security wants, security team wants to take on. But up until now, they haven't said flat out no to, to Flash. So <laughs> I, I'm not right. sure what's going to happen now, like, yeah. Right. I mean, to be fair, from a Ubuntu perspective, um, uh, Adobe stopped supporting Flash on Linux directly uh, several years ago now. So um, technically, uh, Firefox, which is the default browser in Ubuntu, um, doesn't have out-of-the-box support for a recent Flash version. So I suppose in some cases, we've already, we've already declared it dead and moved on. Uh <laughs> yeah, but it, it's, it's still part of the... Um Top ten things to do after. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And uh, thanks to thanks to some lovely, you know, uh, lovely other folks in the open source community, you know, we can still have and enjoy Flash. Um, so yeah. I, I don't imagine that uh, it will ever be an issue as long as we want to have it. Um, but in some ways, we've already moved on. I, I yeah. think it's probably a fair, a fair thing to say. Yeah. There's going to be some transition period for a lot of our users. It wouldn't surprise me if, like, if it's running on eighty percent of of Ubuntu machines, or, or probably not. 
not in all the company settings, but like home users, I guess the vast majority of fashion well. Yeah, I, I can foresee it be, being something that uh, will be around for a long, long, long time. You know, there'll yeah. always be always be legacy content that people want to consume in Flash that would just never be ported. Um, yeah. So, in that effect, it's here to stay. <laughs> Holiday pictures from 1998. That's right. That's right. Okay, what's next? Um, Nanak asks. Will the phone slash Unity 8 store replace the current uh, Ubuntu software center in the future? Um, at least in Unity 7, I don't see. Um, I mean, you can. Can't you use the, uh, the, the scopes there to in install packages and view packages and so on? So if you yeah, actually, so, right. This te technology already there, but not the store store, but the that packages. Yeah, you can search for. Um, I think I may have done this once or twice, even accidentally, uh, on on a new install because you search for search for something and it's not installed, but it right. comes up right. So that already works, but I don't see the support center being being dropped from from the from the archive very soon, but. Uh, one of the great things with Unity 8 is going to be that once once we have it on the on the desktop for real, uh, we're going to have all the the great apps that can be automatically approved and can automatically have them in a, a secure and confined manner. So um, I'm all for it. But yeah, I don't don't see a software center being being removed from the archive anytime soon. I'm not sure if that answered the question. Yeah, I, I think, um, like you said, from a Unity 7 traditional desktop, what we have today perspective, I don't, I don't see um, the Unity 8 store sort of usurping the, the software center that we have at the moment. But certainly in the future, we'll, we'll be happy to, to look forward to all the goodness that the, uh, the, the uh, Unity 8 store can bring us. So. Right. Um, question from Silvio: Have you ever considered making a tweaking tool for Unity 8, possibly working on phone and desktop, to allow modifying the size of the launcher icons, changing functions for buttons, Maizu, and so on? Also, will Ubuntu Touch ever support themes like a regular Linux distro? <laughs> yes, the themes question uh, came up a couple of times, and we're working on it. Um, there's already support for um, theming apps. If you have a look at developer.com, there was a, at the blog, there was a blog entry from Jumbo who wrote about how you can uh, theme, theme a complete app and everything, but um, like a complete theme for, for, for the entire experience uh, that's still, still being worked on. So yes, it's going to be there uh, when I don't know, you probably need to ask Jumbo or, or Zoltan from the SDK team. And about the tweaking tool, no idea. Um, no idea. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to maybe mention uh, the Michael Zanetti store. Uh, what's the name? But. I, I don't foresee um, us ever making a tweaking tool um, for Unity 8 because, by definition, if we consider it um, useful enough to create a tweak tool for it, then it would probably just be in the default uh, <laughs> experience, either you know with the same default and an option. Um, having a lot of options is always difficult, you know, from a, a design perspective and from a user perspective. Um, your a perspective. Really, my preference as a user, I think, is to always to have same defaults because I don't really want to. I don't really want to play with options. Other people love playing with options, so um, it's difficult to sort of, uh, you know, meet everyone's use case. But I think the idea of us having a tweak tool for something like Unity is just a bit silly. You would you would argue for inclusion in, inside the the, the uh, environment itself as an option as opposed to making a tweak tool. Um, yeah. That said, I completely uh, uh, foresee people creating and uh, uh, all sorts of 
or if you will, tweak tools or utilities that will that will change the unity experience of the phone. Um, should be interesting. Yeah, um, I mean, if 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 you want to to write such a tool, just I would suggest you you have a chat with the with the desktop team, for example. They've been working on uh, the system settings app, and uh, they should know where you might want to tweak and change something. Um, but like, there's not not going to be a guarantee that these options are always going to be there. They might change, and that's that's usually a, uh, where where a lot of problems come from. Uh, when you're dealing with loads and loads of um, configurable options, like in the very early days of Ubuntu, I was working on the on the desktop together with Sebastian Bachet, and I can't count how many times we ran into problems in bug reports where somebody said, "Okay, this broke, like this doesn't work anymore," and you're asking them, "Okay, which version do you use?" and 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 you have a like a bug ping pong for 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 days. And then uh, in the end, they say, "Okay, I just deleted all my settings, and now everything works again." And this is because, like, sometimes the 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 format uh, of of the how you store the the configuration options changes, or you rename something to something else, or change something to something else. Like, there's a huge uh, cost coming with with uh, allowing things to be configured. There's also like a, a permutation of of, of settings. Uh, that makes everything more complex and um, it, if you want something to be configurable it, it comes with the cost and, and it needs to be clear that we absolutely need this so so as much as i can understand that you want different size different font different anything um i know why it's why it's so difficult i hope that makes sense uh, Michael did mention, so I, I wasn't crazy. Um, so Michael Zanetti does have a, a tweak geek in the open store, which is, yeah. yeah. So it exists. There you go. Um, there you go. Oh. And I'm guessing, yes, you can find it on Launchpad as well, the code. Uh, look look around uh, for mzanetti in open store, or just ping him on IRC. I'm sure he'd be happy. So. Not not surprising that someone has done it already. All right. Here was a question from somebody who forgot to prefix their question. It's from Ubuntu Biene. Um, and the question is, I have a question which is actually the goal of the Ubuntu phone on the open market, to get market shares as Windows Phone, Android, and iOS. Um, I'm sure I understand the question correctly. But on the open market, I think we already have a couple of phones which are sold through general um, electronic stores. So you can buy them there. But I don't think there's any uh, publicly available numbers. So market share is probably not something you're going to find out very easily. But since there's only three phones out until now and just for, I don't know, two months or something, uh it's it's pretty clear that it's that it's uh, the the market share is very very low okay Aaron asked do you guys run Ubuntu touch daily and if so what channel you first um I was just gonna say yes uh I tend to run on a and double proposed of course always <laughs> So that's that's Wiley. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Um, and of course, so why do I run Double Propose? Mostly because I like seeing uh, new things. Uh, I don't mind things breaking. That's part of the fun. And um, yeah, there's uh, if uh, if it exists on the phone, I have it. You know, so it's like I'm never waiting for fixes or anything. Um, I can do that to some extent because um, this doesn't have to be my primary communication device. So okay, that helps. Yeah. Uh, if I always had to be able to make, plus I'm, uh, I'm a bit weird because I I make almost no phone calls, and the ones I do, I'm usually sitting at my desk and I'm using my PC anyway. So, I'm a bit of a, a weird phone user uh, in that aspect of things. So, makes sense. Yeah. Um. I also have a MX4. Just bought it a couple of couple of days ago, 
and I'm on RC proposed because I was waiting for a specific fix and I was <laughs> confirming it. So that's why it's RC proposed and not the, the usual stable channel. And I'm, I'm super happy with it. And it's my primary phone. I take it everywhere and, and yeah, I like it. And people like it too. Like, but if I take it out, like people look at it and it's good. Yeah, it's a nice phone. I, I like it as well. Um, so uh, I was going to say, you mentioned mentioned RC Proposed. So OTA5 is coming very soon for those of you who, who might be curious and hoping and waiting. Uh, I expect that we'll see it this week. Um, yeah. prob probably before Friday. So you can yeah. have it in your hands on a Friday afternoon. That's, that's my prediction. <laughs> loads, loads of good stuff in, in there. Indeed. Yeah. Right. Um, you want to use your asks. Aside from the scopes initiative, are there any other plans to address the app gap issue facing Ubuntu on phones and tablets? Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Um, yeah. well, you just shared. You just shared a link uh, well, yesterday about uh, about something that's uh, addressing this. Oh yeah, remember? in yeah. Uh, China. Yes, in China. Yeah. Uh, so there was a huge huge, huge uh, hackathon in Beijing. We also had a huge app competition in in China. And uh, there's more work on the way uh, with universities and, and big, big companies there. So um, in China, there's loads and loads happening with, with uh, the Ubuntu phone. And we're also going to announce um, something new very, very soon, very, very soon. I hope tomorrow, but maybe the day after tomorrow. So yeah, we're, we're constantly working on it. Like um, the, the the tools are are, are uh, being improved. The, we're, we're adding more APIs. We're, we try to make things easier. There's loads and loads happening, and also uh, conversations with um, independent software vendors are also happening at the same time. So yes, 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 it's happening. But uh, of course, it's not. Going to happen overnight, right? I think another big driver um, for this will be the convergence issue. So uh, I know uh, the latest app that's been making some rounds and some stories has been Deco, which mm. is a really cool email client. Um, a big shout out to Dan and the rest of those guys uh, working on that. Um, but yeah, so having having the desktop bringing into focus, um, I think will help drive applications because people will just need them. And where there's an itch, it'll be scratched, and uh, you know things will things will appear. Um, as long as people are interested in the platform, and they are, then then we're gonna solve our problems, so to speak. Um, and so, getting that uh, that larger segment of users and, and use cases will help um, uh, with that. So I, I, I imagine um, you know those critical apps will always sort of um, be there uh, for the other secondary. Things you know that uh, that just might not be common or popular. That's always going to be uh, a bit more difficult. But you know, uh, Linux has grown uh, a long ways. You know, despite never having uh, binary compatibility with any of the other operating systems. You know that that you might think of um, that would be more common for for the end user, and we've we've done just fine. So I don't see it as, as a long term problem at all. Uh, Aaron asks, um, what is the goal of the Ubuntu phone on the open market? Oh, he, I think he's re-asking. Yes. Thank you, Aaron, for re-asking that. <laughs> Would the user ask, uh, will we see the return of the 100 paper cuts project for Ubuntu on desktop and mobile tablet? That's a brilliant idea. That's a great um, question. Yeah. Um, we should talk to uh, uh, Alberto. And uh, the hundred paper cuts, the hundred paper cuts project um, still exists, although you you don't probably see as much focus as it used to be. Um, but here we'll give it a I'll give it a little uh, a little uh, surge of popularity by mentioning it. But yes, it still exists. Uh, that would be really interesting. Um, I think that's uh, definitely worth discussing. Probably something to bring up on uh, on the mailing list and uh, see what Alberto thinks of that. I won't I won't pretend to. Uh, have any insight, but it makes sense. Which which uh, Alberto was was running it? 
uh, I don't want to mess up his name. It's yeah, a, don't. It's, okay. it's a cool name. It's a. Uh, I can't remember his uh, his family name and surname. I get them backwards, so I don't want to say it and get it wrong. No, no, no. That's, that's, <laughs> fine. that's fine. I think I yeah. I just couldn't remember the name. But yeah, maybe it's also something we could look into for the for the uh, global jam. So if you're interested in that, if you have your pet peeves, if you have like small things that, that would improve visibility a lot, um, it maybe it would be worth to 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 get together and compile a list of 100 paper cuts on on the phone. Um, I think that would be absolutely brilliant. And maybe for the global jam, we could even. Uh, start fixing them together. Oh, yeah, that would be interesting, actually. Let me, uh, I'll take a note. Okay. Awesome. Excellent questions, guys. Um, let me see if I can find the next one while Daniel's taking a note. Uh, you want to use your has another question. Uh, he's asking, is there any ETA on mere proprietary driver support from vendors such as NVIDIA? Um, no, there's no there's no magical ETA. I think uh, if there's if there's interest in this, maybe we should um, also ask. His name is suddenly escaping me. Like Kevin. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, maybe we should add add his name uh, to the list of, of folks to maybe uh, bring on and talk about um, Mir and what's going on in in, in that world. Um, so yeah, so the, the, there's no sort of ETA on on driver support. It'll, I guess, um, and I guess really Kevin's the best person to answer uh, what's happening in that realm. I don't think any of us can 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 talk uh, very definitively about that. Um, I do know, uh, and if you were at the last US, you would have seen this demo of things uh, like uh, GTK applications running uh, on Mir in Unity 8 rather nicely, including um, uh, and other complex applications, including things like LibreOffice and uh, the SDK, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, so they're they're definitely working on uh, adding support for for lots of different things. Uh, let's see. Cool. Notes taken. Notes taken. Uh, another question. Uh, has there been any discussion regarding updated content for the Ubuntu Free Culture Showcase? Mm. And this is the stuff, the content, the sample content, right, that you see when you first install Ubuntu, correct? Yeah, uh, let me. I don't even know if we. Yeah, we haven't updated it in a while. There's a there's a piece of I think it's Swan Song. I know I know that I've installed way too many ISOs and see. <laughs> hey, you have I, I, I didn't. I yeah. play with this stuff way too much. Uh, and then there's a a picture. And something else. Maybe Just three things. Maybe we could have a chat with the uh, Ubuntu Studio folks. Uh, and, and see if they would be interested in helping us uh, run the, com the competition. And maybe Ubuntu user, I don't know who you are. Uh, you're, you're not telling us much with your with your nickname. Uh, <laughs> but maybe if, if you're interested in, in helping us uh, run the com competition, I'm not sure if we can still do it for uh, this cycle, if we still have enough time, but maybe we do. Uh, I think it would be brilliant to to update the content and and get some get some new fresh uh, free culture onto the Ubuntu images. Let us know. That's a good idea. Um, I can say one slightly related thing to that is if you're weird like me and enjoy the or maybe not weird, if you're normal like I am <laughs> and you enjoy enjoy the wallpaper and the wallpaper contests that happen uh, every cycle. Uh, I guess the weird part is that I find uh, I like certain certain pictures, and then of course when I install a new release, I lose them. Uh, there are packages for the old wallpapers, so never fear; they're still there. Uh, you'll find them under release name dash wallpapers generally. So things like Karmic Karmic wallpapers, Maverick wallpapers, uh, and so you can install those packages uh, in the future. So I think I have a, a wallpaper right now actually from the contest. 
from, I don't know, maybe two or three years ago. It's a picture of uh, hot air balloons, so. <laughs> a picture of? Uh, a picture of hot air balloons. Nice. Because of course, yes. It kind of struck a chord with me. So it's not it's not moved in some time, but um, just another example of, of cool uh, stuff that people are producing within the Ubuntu community that like, again, art is cool. Uh, Chloe Wolfie Girl asks, what do you expect us to see in OTA 6? Um, it's a good question. Daniel, do you have any insights? Mm, no idea. No idea. I haven't even been, been, been trying to keep up with uh, all the fixes that went in and which of them are going to be part of OTA 5 and which ones are not going to, to land in that update. I have no idea. Um, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure what will be in OTA 6 per se either. I do know for OTA 5, you're going to get um, enterprise WPA support, and um, there will be some power fixes, which is always useful. Uh, and hmm, OTA 6, I'm not sure. It's a great question. Um, Mario Grip asks, what do you think about the UbuPorts project? Is it good or bad uh, in Canonical's point of view? Um, and he says one plus one or two and convergence. So I think he's asking uh, what we think about um, ports and are ports good or bad? Yeah, great, absolutely fantastic. Um, it's, yeah, it's a bit, Unfortunate because um, running like installing Ubuntu on a on a PC usually worked. Like in the in the past, there was probably a a, a Wi-Fi driver that didn't quite work or a, a printer that didn't quite work. But that's much much easier nowadays. Um, so that basically everything works almost all the time. But with phones, it's obviously not quite the case. Like there's different chipsets. There's everything else involved, so it's much, much harder to uh, install the Ubuntu on, on any given phone. Uh, that's, that's also a question we, we get a lot. So if, if people take on the work and, and port Ubuntu to, to new phones, tablets, or IoT boards, or whatever else, that's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Um, the more uh, of this we can get into Ubuntu proper, so that we could maybe even build images or do something, uh, obviously, the better. Like that, that would be absolutely fantastic. One problem we, we sometimes have is that uh, some of the drivers can't be redistributed. So uh, we can't just take blobs or source code and, and, and stuff and and stick it into the archive and then produce images from it. That's that's sometimes uh, unfortunately not not, not possible. Um, yeah, and uh, DPM David Panella just mentioned to me that Mario Grip, who uh, asked the question, was was uh, the one who created the OnePlus port. So. Um, it was absolutely fantastic work and it's much 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 appreciated so thanks a lot for that um yeah i don't know what what the what the latest latest is with with uh with your port or what you've been doing maybe you can um let us know during the show and we're going to read it out so people if you're interested in in oneplus and running ubuntu on it we can we can let them know as well um fantastic work we know that it's super, super hard to uh, fix stuff in the kernel, build millions of kernels, try to make them work, uh, adapt things here and there, and, and, and put everything together into an image. It's, it's much appreciated. And I, I hope your, your experience with, with everyone in the, in the Ubuntu team was, was, was great. Anything else you wanted to, to mention? About ports, um, about ports. 
Sorry, uh, I think, oh, Aaron's try, trying to talk about the next OTA. I gotcha. <laughs> he was pinging, translations, translations. I was so confused. Um, and basically saying that uh, we'll have uh, auto-updated lang language packs, so languages will actually be able to, to get uh, everything that they need for proper translations. So that's good. It's very good. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, on the porting perspective, I, I think Daniel is correct. Um, obviously, we want to run Ubuntu on everything everywhere, right? That's sort of been the mantra since day one. Uh, so you know, the classic Ubuntu on your toaster, you know, I want it. Uh, with that, of course, from a technical perspective, there's always limitations. So phones are definitely pr have proven to be uh, a bit harder than uh, other devices, and. Um, you know, just like laptops were proven to be, you know, not quite the same and a bit more difficult than a desktop, uh, but we'll get there. You know, I think it is definitely getting easier, uh, hopefully, uh, from, you know, I, certainly from uh, imagining running Ubuntu on a, a feature phone, if you will, years ago, which would have been just an, an enormous effort. So mm, from some perspective, it's gotten easier. Uh, but the reality is, of course, that, yeah, there's still a lot of, a lot of special sauce that goes into these devices. Um, and the vendors don't tend to, you know, they have so much shorter lifespans and, and that sort of thing. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, 10 years out uh, what the what the landscape looks like for, for these sorts of devices. But, um, yeah, I, I definitely agree that, that porting is, uh, is a good thing. And um, those those who undertake it and have their technical skills that, that um, can make it work, um, they're great. Um, I love uh, running Ubuntu on things that uh, wasn't necessarily always intended. Okay, using a device for a slightly different purpose. You know, it lengthens the lengthens the um, uh, usefulness of the device and often adds features that uh, didn't otherwise exist. So, plus yeah. one for me for sure. Yeah, it also exercises our our tools and, and, and workflows and, and everything else we we have in the in the archive. Well, it's always a good way to to find unexpected uh, behavior. Of software. So. That's right. That's right. We, lo we love bugs, so at least I do. So yeah, using something um, slightly differently like that will, you know, can ex expose uh, issues that we might have, um, or or force us to be more um, regimented about how we're doing things. So it's yeah. good. All right. Um, you want to user has another question. And they ask, what advice can you give for non coders to get involved in Ubuntu for mobile devices? Another great question. You're on fire. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you suggest? What would I suggest? Um, obviously, being uh, if, if you're able to get a device um, and use it, that is uh, an excellent way to get involved. Using the device, giving feedback, uh, participating in uh, discussions. Um, if you're artistic and you want to talk about designs, uh, getting involved with the core apps project, um, you know everything from filing a bug to offering a translation, uh, to offering a design, or even a merge proposal. Um, you know, not everyone, I guess, is a coder, but sometimes there are things that you can do um, that that that, uh, that that could be considered, you know, programming or code like. Uh, I'll give an example of uh, the help app, which uh, yeah. Daniel has has been helping with. Um, well, on the one hand, it's a uh, it's, it's it's a merge proposal that you would that you would submit. Uh, it's it's really just uh, questions and answers. So if you can write content, uh, you can contribute to the help app. You know, you could have code. Um, so don't necessarily sell yourself short if you don't consider yourself a coder. But there are those are off the top of my head plenty of ways to sort of get involved. And we definitely need um, people who who are uh, shall we say non technical or, or don't have that sort of coding mantra. Um, it takes uh, it takes all of us to build something great. So we don't want to have just one viewpoint or one um, you know uh, just one culture or one reference point. You know, uh, we, we we want to have the diversity because that's what breeds uh, uh, good things. So yeah, I would have said the same. I would probably um, also mention like, um, testing how like. Nick, you can probably talk a bit about that, like how, um, like the OTA testing, for, for example, right now, like they, they run through a, a lot of manual tests as well, just to make sure that, that everything is covered. Um, can people get involved there as well? Yeah, um, 
actually, it's uh, something that uh, I'm currently working with the QA team on to open that process up a bit more to make it uh, even easier to do this. But yes, you can certainly, uh, if you if you run double proposed or RC proposed, if you run some of these channels, you can already participate because, of course, you can use the device, and if you find bugs, you can file them. Uh, you can ask on the mailing list or on IRC if, if things look a bit weird to you. And we get feedback all the time from people who do that. So a big thank you to those of you who are already doing this. Um, if you're a bit more, um, you know, you like your phone, you don't have a phone just for testing, and, and you like using it, uh, but at the same time you're willing to live somewhat on the edge, uh, we'll, we'll be announcing something soon where you can get involved helping test these uh, OTA releases. So, of course, the fun part for you and the cool part is that you'll get uh, the OTA, quote unquote, the, the release candidate version of it anyway, before everyone else. So that's cool. You get to see the new goodness. While at the same time, uh, in theory, you're reasonably assured that nothing too crazy will happen to your device, uh, in theory. <laughs> Less risk, I suppose, than running Devil Propose. But yeah, um, definitely. And, and the feedback will, will certainly help out uh, the QA guys. Uh, they, uh, again, would appreciate would appreciate the help and uh, as we get more and more devices and and different use patterns, uh, people use different things, have different apps. Um, we never know what might break or where it might break. So, yeah, that's another great way to get involved. And also, one thing I just remembered earlier, somebody was asking about the app gap. Like, if you have a crazy idea for for a great app that's still missing and you want to basically like write a specification of how it's supposed to work. Like a small uh, wireframe diagram where you just draw what it would look like, how it would work. Like if you want to write something like this up and drum up support and see who would be willing to, to help you with with uh, with writing the app, it might also be a thing you can do. So yeah, loads of ways. And if if you still want to get involved and then didn't find anything, just uh, send a mail to the, to the phone mailing list. I'm sure we're going to find somebody who has some work to do and who's going to be happy to, to have a new friend helping them out. <laughs> Indeed. Cool. Uh, Ubuntu Fun DE asked, to set the cursor in a field while you type is sometimes really hard. Any improvement in the next time? No idea. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um... This is something that's actually, to me, universal with touch screens. It's, uh, it's hard to actually do pinpoint accuracy sometimes when you have a finger as opposed to a mouse that you're used to, right? Where you can, like, you have the little pointer and you have a lot of precision control in a mouse. And now I've got my big, fat, stubby finger and I'm poking at a screen and I'm grabbing all those pixels. Um, so ideas would, I'm sure they would be really interested to hear any ideas you might have on that. But I agree with Daniel. I don't know of anything specific. Um, but yeah, if you think it could be improved and you've got an idea, share it. Uh, a bunch of users asked, has there been any further discussion um, that you can share regarding a potential IPO for Canonical? No. No. <laughs> I'm afraid not. I think, I think we'll leave it at that. I think that's fair enough. Uh, Rara Ra asks, what are some innovations you intend to include in the desktop Unity 8 in terms of desktop usage patterns? Something like global search or something like the good old Windicators. Idea. No idea. <laughs> no idea. I mean, Daniel, I'm, you're you're full of answers, my friend. I'm sorry. I mean, I've I've been playing around with Unity 8 on the desktop a bit, but um, I don't know, like different user patterns. I don't know what's planned. Like, we should really get. Will and, and somebody like Will and Kevin having them both, uh, one talking about the, the desktop, one talking about Unity 8 and what's what's happening there, what's what's being worked on. I think that that will help a lot. Right. Um, Do you know anything more? I was going to say uh, the scopes experience is definitely um, much more interesting and, and useful uh, on the desktop. So there's some phone inspired things that are coming to the desktop. Uh, and there's some other interesting things that um, may affect desktop usage patterns. Uh, for instance, having uh, how we deal with window management and uh, app life cycles. Uh, I wonder how inspired that will be on the desktop. Because on the phone, of course, you see one app at a time, 
and your app lifecycle can suspend or be killed in the background or that sort of thing. So it'd be interesting to see how much influence that has on the desktop. And um, yeah, what else? The other thing I was going to mention is things like um, uh, gestures, so bottom swipe and having context sensitive uh, information available to you based upon a gesture. Um, I see that happening on the desktop as well, although I'm not sure exactly um, how we'll invoke that when, when if you don't have a touch screen. But there you go. Windicators, of course. Whatever it is, we'll call it a windicator, and then we'll finally have that problem solved. Uh, Chloe Wolfie Girl asks, any update on how or if the HUD is coming back? <laughs> okay. And talking about global search, anything like that for the phone? Um, yeah, so this, this sort of is a, a follow-up to the previous question. So specifically to the HUD, uh, I know that's been uh, a contentious design point for some time, and I, I don't have anything specific to share. Uh, but that's a, that's a great question. Uh, I know it gets circulated around every few months, um, and I don't specifically know if design has anything that they, that they want to share on that yet. But Daniel? Do you no. Know? no, OK. Um, it would be great if it could be uh, implemented somehow. Like, like all, all the stuff you have hidden in, in, in menus, sub menus somewhere, or uh, additional features, and, and I don't know, integrated with uh, voice search. I mean, there's, there's millions of things that could be, could be done, but I don't know anything specific. Okay. Um. And I don't know if, if it's any of the most pressing problems. I don't know. For some it might be. Having the HUD or not? Yeah. Yeah, I hope, um, to some extent, I hope we, we don't have that much complexity that we feel that we have to have the HUD. <laughs> right. But <laughs> once, once uh, Unity 8 is on the desktop, like, like where I always used it in, in, back in Unity 7 was when I was dealing with the GIMP. Yeah, I was just going to say GIMP is like my go-to for this, yeah. <laughs> love the GIMP, but like finding how with the scaling, scale image, whatever all that stuff is. Like, Well, it's just when you have things like all those filters in the menu system, yeah. which is a great way to do it, but it's the HUD makes it so easy to, yeah, always the GIMP is where I'll use it. Um. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. Uh, so we're getting close to time. I think we've got a few more questions to try and fire through these. Uh, you want to use your, again, ask about the HUD. Um, I think we've answered that. Uh, Chloe Wolfley Girl asks, any update on when news, picture, nearby, scopes, et cetera, will land in the store? And also, when will the next Telegram update be out? Um, for the first part of scopes, uh, I, I believe nearby scope is in the store, but maybe I'm wrong. I think it is. But yeah. Um, maybe not. Like, I think they were asking for for uh, an update. Like, I know but that for, for Telegram, there's one planned real soon now, but um, I don't know when exactly it's going to land. Yeah, the Telegram update. Um, uh, I, I guess Michael Carney would know, uh, but that was they were teasing that uh, within the last few days. Um, so I imagine we'll see it very shortly. Uh, but yeah, but the scopes, I thought the nearby scope was in the store. Uh, I, it should be. Um, OK, Aaron agrees with me. So take a look, Chloe Wolfley Girl. Uh, if it's not, um, it's definitely something you can bring up on the Ubuntu phone mailing list, uh, because this, this should be there. Uh, Robert Ra asks, can you include Easter eggs in the HUD? Oh, please include Easter eggs in the HUD. <laughs> um, but seriously, I love the HUD. <laughs> Yeah, what, yes, that would be, that would yeah. be cool. That yeah. would be cool. We, sh we, should, we should have a sentient AI um, uh, Easter egg in the HUD. There you go. Yeah, just I'll pop. download the source and see if there's Easter eggs included. As I say, rah, rah, rah. If you file a bug, I'll, I'll confirm it and get a tree out. <laughs> <laughs> Send it the proposal. Yes, yes. Uh, OK, well, all right, we've got one more question. We'll, we'll squeeze this in. Uh, Ubuntu user asks, there was some discussion a while back about switching the default web browser to Ubuntu. 
you know, any but to, uh, to Chromium from Firefox. Um, and, but he says, is the goal now to use the uh, Ubuntu mobile browser as standard across all, all form factors? I don't know how, for how much this has been considered. Um, like in general, I think the question is absolutely fair and it makes sense to agree on one technology for one thing. So you don't have to maintain like 500 of them in different scenarios. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if after a lot of consideration and talking to users and, and everything else, uh, if the current web browser is not going to be the first choice for the desktop for some time, it wouldn't surprise me. But I haven't been part of the discussions of, like it, it would very likely be um, the desktop team, it would be uh, design people who, who do user testing, it would be uh, product managers, and it would probably be like everyone else who, who complains about it. So there's going to be a, a very long discussion and a lot, a lot of feedback rounds. So um, if, if you have features you're absolutely missing from the, from the web browser, let people know. File a bug, uh, talk about it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see, um, how about you, Nick? Do you see like the, the current web browser on the phone replacing Chromium and, 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 and Firefox anytime soon? Um, yeah, I think uh, the, the, the default applications uh, have always been an interesting uh, thing. Um, and I, but recently, it seems that people have, um, have calmed down, so to speak, a bit on it. So it's, uh, it's not seen as, as, um, as this really, really super important thing that it once was. You know, people were really contentious over uh, music, default music players or default browsers or whatever else. And now it's sort of a realization that if it's in the archive, the default doesn't matter quite as much as you think it might. Uh, that said, I don't know that I actually foresee that happening. Uh, and I, I say that simply because the browser is um, something fairly important to a lot of people. Uh, and it's a uh, sort of standardized, and it's not something that we necessarily want to get. I mean, I don't think uh, Ubuntu wants them to necessarily make a, a, a browser try and compete in that, in that space, right? So to some extent, maybe shipping uh, Firefox uh, makes sense as the default. On the other hand, uh, it's the default experience of the phone, and maybe we'll want to mirror that on the desktop. Um, if that's the case, uh, I can see it, uh, an argument definitely being made for that, uh, along with the other uh, core apps that exist on the phone and migrating them to the, to the desktop. I, su I suspect, though, the browser will be one of the, uh, if there's one that doesn't switch, it will be, it will be the browser. I don't yeah. foresee as much uh, issues with things like File Manager and Music and, and um, Doctree or whatever else, uh, making it as a default in, on the desktop as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Interesting times. Loads, loads, loads of questions. But yeah, bring them again when we have uh, Kevin <laughs> here, Oli here, Will here. Um, they're the right people for that kind of question. Indeed. Um, yeah. Great. Great questions today, everyone. Uh, Daniel, and I appreciate it. We love. Uh, it's fun to stump Daniel. I love the face of, no. <laughs> no idea. No idea. Yeah. No idea. So, um, yeah, we'll let you, uh, we should definitely uh, uh, get some of those guys on. And like I said, next week, though, we'll be um, uh, Jose and uh, the Wukon DE guys as well uh, talking about what, what it's like to uh, to run those big events and uh, how you might be able to do the same. And we'll look to uh, the following weeks to get uh, to get to the rest of those guys on. So anyways, uh, thanks again, everyone. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, again, remember to like, subscribe, circle, uh, favorite, all that good stuff. Uh, Jose will be very happy. Uh, follow Ubuntu on air to get more uh, goodness like this. Uh, there's lots of shows that go on. And of course, you can catch us here every week uh, at this time. Uh, I think it's 1400 UTC now. We've bounced around a bit. 15. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 1500 UTC on Tuesday. You'll find us here. Oh, not necessarily Daniel and I, but someone, someone from the community team. You can ask us questions, and as always, uh, we'll try and answer them.
Cheers, guys. Take See care. You. Bye.